revered Sami Dibbananda ji, the secretary of Ramakrishna Mission Sharadapit, which is an esteemed seat of higher education, both Swami's Ekachittananda and Mahapragyananda, principal and vice principal respectively of the Vidyamandir College, learned members of the faculty, brother monks, and most importantly, dear students of Vidyamandir College. I consider this a proud privilege to have the opportunity of participating in this webinar. Man is the maker of history, said Will Durant in his book, The Lessons of History. Standing at the threshold of Platinum Jubilee of our great independence, we remember four great souls, Swami Vivekananda, Deshbandhu Chittaranyan Das, Nitaji Subhash Chandra Bose and Mahatma Gandhi. If we cast a glance at the story of our freedom struggle, we find that our leaders of the freedom movement were sharply divided between two groups, one being led by Mahatma Gandhi, another by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. In this context, it's interesting to note that both Gandhiji and Netaji were influenced by Swami Vivekananda. Although we are confined to the discussions on Netaji and Deshbandhu in this webinar, here I would like to move slightly out of context. I must mention that we can't skip Gandhiji. Once Lenin told M. N. Roy, the protagonist of radical humanism, I quote, as a leader and inspirer of a mass movement in India, Gandhi is objectively and evidently a revolutionary." Unquote. Again, amongst the leaders of our freedom struggle, Gandhiji, beyond doubt, was the tallest mass leader. Swami Vivekananda gave a clarion call to the young countrymen. I quote, Thou too, clad with but a rag round thy loins, proudly proclaim at the top of thy voice, the Indian is my brother, the Indian is my life, India's gods and goddesses are my god, India's society is the cradle of my infancy, the pleasure garden of my youth, the sacred heaven, the Varanasi of my old age. Say, brother, the soil of India is my highest heaven, the good of India is my good." Unquote. If anybody amongst our leaders really practiced this and spread and also verbatim, it was Gandhiji and Gandhiji alone. If we peep into Netaji's life, we are convinced that Netaji wanted to become a member of the militia of Swami Vivekananda, which consists of monks only. He came to Swami Brahmanandaji, who advised him to consecrate his life for the cause of our motherland, Bharat Mata. Later on, Subhash Chandra Bose gratefully acknowledged the influence of Ramakrishna Vivekananda in his life and struggle. In a way, India's freedom is the outcome of Swami Vivekananda's blessings. Swamiji told Bal Gangadhar Tilak that India would get freedom most unexpectedly on completion of 50 years from then. Swamiji said this on 14th August, evening of 1897, and India got freedom at the stroke of the midnight of 14th August of 1947, exactly after 50 years. What a powerful blessing it was, what an accurate prediction indeed. Friends, I am mentioning all this so that we can take a holistic approach towards assessing these two personalities, namely Deshbandhu and Netaji. The focal point of our discussion is contributions of these two great stalwarts to the freedom struggle of India. While Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose is a household name through the length and breadth of India, 
Deshbandhu is a household name in Bengal, even after 96 years of his passing away. While Nitaji was considered a spiritual son of Vivekananda, Deshbandhu was an ardent admirer of Vivekananda. Both apparently were destined to be ICS, but ultimately made great sacrifices for the sake of India's freedom struggle. First, let us talk about Deshbandhu Chittaranjan Das. He was a leading figure in Bengal during the non-cooperation movement of 1920 to 1922 and initiated the ban on British-made clothes, setting an example by burning his own European clothes and wearing Khadi clothes. He was a believer in non-violence and constitutional methods for the realization of national independence, advocated Hindu-Muslim unity, cooperation and communal harmony and championed the cause of national education. He resigned his presidency of the Indian National Congress at the Goya session in 1922 after losing a motion on no council entry to Gandhiji's faction. He then founded the Swaraj party with veteran Matilal Nehru in 1923 to express his uncompromising opinion and position. To say the least, one must admit that Chittaranjan's memory will be cherished by his countrymen as that of a builder rather than a destroyer. When he entered Indian politics, he found political ideals and parties in a most nebulous and chaotic condition. The masses generally and a large portion of the classes were still sleeping in the long night of medieval mysticism and inaction. Chittaranjan tried to awaken his people from this deep slumber and elevated them to a newborn consciousness of nationhood. This will remain the principal landmark of his political work. The whole pupil brought under a common standard, inspired by ideals of self-help and determination, and set to work out their own destiny without any extraneous aid or help. In his immense sacrifice for political idealism, in risking his health, and life for organizing a new political party and in his integrity, doggedness and tenacity, Deshbandhu had no equal in India. Chittaranjan's sympathy for his countrymen, his spirit of sacrifice, his gridlessness, his courage and magnanimity, his grace and dignity all together made him a real Chittaranjan. Years before, what Lord Lytton, the then governor of Bengal, had said to Lord Olivier, the secretary for India in the first Labour government, about the great Indian leader Deshbandhu Chittaranjan Das. Lytton said, Mr. Das in India had the reputation of being particularly upright and scrupulous politician, second only to Gandhi himself in saintliness of character." Quote unquote. Later, Ravindranath Tagore summed up in the following beautiful message at his demise, NHLA chile sate kore mrittu hin pran marone tahai tumi kore gale dan. Man, truly reveals himself through his gift and the best gift that Chittaranjan Das has left for his countrymen is not any particular political or social program but the creative force of a great aspiration that has taken a deathless form in the sacrifice which his life represented. Quoted. Now let us come to Netaji Shubhar Chandra Bose. A household name through 
throughout the length and breadth of India. It's a name so mystical, yet a reality, so romantic, yet classical. I personally feel, after Swami Vivekananda, Netaji is the name which commands the maximum respect of the Indians, irrespective of caste, creed, community, or complexion in India. He is the second only to Vivekananda, whose name inspires confidence, fearlessness, patriotism, etc., amongst men and women, especially youths. Give me blood and I shall give you freedom is the epitome of his approach and contribution in the freedom struggle. The debate between he died and he didn't die made him not only immortal but also a mystery which will always keep him alive in the hearts of the millions. This has elevated him almost to the level of a mythological deity. Even now, many people strongly believe that Netaji is still alive. Netaji didn't die. Yes, Netaji lives in the hearts of millions of Indians. Some say that attempts were made to carry out a vilification campaign against Netaji, though he didn't meet with success. Netaji formed INA, Indian National Army. Netaji believed in armed struggle, freedom from shackles of bondage at any cost, democracy and socialism, although he was of the opinion that after independence there should be benevolent dictatorship for 10 years. His love for spirituality can never be overestimated. He strongly believed that India was a land of spirituality. As such, every breath of Indian national life should be backed by spirituality. Netaji believed in secularism, if this word means inclusiveness and harmony of religions. The first 16 years of Subhash Chandra's life were years of violence. In a way, the geopolitical scenario of the contemporary Bengal led him to believe in the perception of assumed confrontation with the British rulers. This conviction resulted in following a militant policy and being an exponent of revolution, while the Congress party officially endorsed non-violence as its policy and therefore the Congress believed in moderation based on parliamentary and constitutional methods. The imperialistic Britishers used to consider him a traitor, while to the Indians he was a hero. Like Swami Vivekananda, Subhash Chandra Bose also believed in spiritual strength, as has been mentioned already. Awakening of soul is necessary to dispel the darkness of a long night. He believed in the Upanishadi gospel. Uttishthato jagrato prapubara nibodhato. Arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is reached. This is why we find him engaged in discussion regarding spiritual matters, hours after hours with Swamis of Ramakrishna order, or absorbed in deep meditation for hours together, secretly sitting inside the sanctum sanctorium of Ramakrishna temple, be it at Ramakrishna Mission Singapore or Ramakrishna Mission Bengal. Today, it is sure that Netaji is no more amongst us physically, but his spirit is there everywhere in Bengal, in India. We may remember the famous and favorite slogan, Netaji Amar Rahe, let Netaji remain immortal. Netaji, I strongly feel, is very much present in the scheme of things of Vivekananda. If Vivekananda was theoretical science, Netaji then was certainly applied science. If Vivekananda was condensed India, Netaji was certainly his flag bearer. In fine, 
standing at this juncture when our nation is through its 75 years of independence. Let us salute the hallowed memory of these two national heroes, heroes of our freedom struggle, of our beloved motherland, namely Deshbandhu Chittaranjan Das and Netaji Shubhar Chandra Bose. Before I wrap up, I wish the very best to each and every one of the organizing committee and also congratulate them for conducting this webinar. I express my gratitude to Shami Ekochittananda, the principal of the Vidya Mandir College, my grateful regards to Shami Dibbanandaji, who is the secretary of the governing body of this college, for having invited me to inaugurate this two-day international webinar. I gladly do so. I also congratulate the speakers who, I am sure, will make every one of us rich through their learned deliberations. Jai Hind, Jai Netaji, Jai Deshbandhu. Thank you so very much.